at a time where inflation remains near record highs and the Federal Reserve Bank is scrambling to bring inflation down. Elon Musk and Kathy Wood have pivoted on their opinions, and they may be saying that the Federal Reserve Bank wishes to stop raising interest rates. They need to stop fighting inflation because if they don't, the better reserve bank will start creating deflation. Inflation is when the price of things go up because the value of your dollars is dropping and deflation is when the price of things go down because the value of a dollar is going up and just like how inflation is good for some people, bad for others deflation is good for some people and bad for others like deflation is good for regular people because when you have deflation now you're savings, and your salary can stretch. Further, you can buy more stuff with the savings and salary that you have, but deflation is terrible information for people who have debt, and it's terrible news for business owners, because now if you have deflation, and you have debt now, you are paying off your debt with more valuable dollars, and if you're a business owner or an investor, deflation is also no longer excellent information. Because that means that your company now has to sell their products at a lower price, meaning smaller profit margins. Which hurts businesses now, let's talk about how we got to this situation, because on January 25th, 2022, the Federal Reserve Bank came out, and they said that there's nothing to worry about, yes. Inflation is a little bit higher. Than predicted, however, it's completely under control, there's nothing for you to worry about the Federal Reserve Bank has. The whole thing secured and safe and so they wanted to keep interest rates at zero. And they said they would start raising interest rates and that they would start fighting inflation sometime in the future because it's no problem right now. Then on March 15, 2022, the Federal Reserve Bank made their first interest rate hike in years when they raised interest rates by 0.5%. And they said that the reason why that they're willing to raise interest rates is that not only our economy is strong, but our economy is continuing to get stronger so that don't expect interest rate hikes to hurt the economy. And this was their first interested hike. And they, they said that. This will now start bringing down inflation. On May 3rd, 2022, the Federal Reserve Bank said that the economy system is still robust, it's still growing, but you can expect 0.5 hikes throughout the year if they raise interest rates by every another half a percent, and that these half a percent hikes will be more than sufficient to bring inflation down. That you don't really need to worry about the economy slowing down because our economy is so strong and so robust on June 15, 2022, the Federal Reserve Bank cranked it up a little bit because they said, okay, inflation is hotter than expected. It's not coming down as fast as we would like. So now we're going to raise interest rates by 0.75%. Don't expect more 0.75 hikes. This is just a one-time thing because we really need to cool inflation down. And they said that their economy is so robust. It's so strong that it will be able to withstand these higher interest rate hikes, by the way, all this data. Analysis that I am giving you with is from the federal, their bank themselves. I went to their website and I read the actual reviews. That's where all this data is from in case you desire to go and read it for yourself. Then on July 26, 2022, that's when the Federal Reserve Bank began to change the tone on the economy a little bit. In July 26, the Federal Reserve Bank said that now our Economy is starting to soften a little bit, however, our economy is remains very strong. Our economy is still robust. Job growth is still there, but inflation is still way higher than expected. So now they raise interest rates again by 0.75%, and now they're saying you know what you might need to expect another. 0.75 hike if inflation continues to stay strong then on September 21st, 2022, the Federal Reserve Banks said that you can expect pain ahead. They said that they were going to raise interest rates again by 0.75%, and they said that they are going to continue to elevate interest rates aggressively, which will deliver inflation down. And they said that this inflation fight is now going to induce pain. It will slow down the economy. And now you can begin to see a different picture of what they have been saying in September compared to what they were saying in January, February. March, April, and May, the Federal Reserve Bank is going to host their next meeting on November 1st and 2nd, which is when they're going to give their next projection and interest rate. 
Announcement, however, prior to that this is where now Elon Musk and Kathy Wood have started to sound the alarms saying the Federal Reserve Bank needs to stop raising interest rates because they're going to hurt the economy and this pain to the economy is going to cause deflation. And that's going to be bad for businesses, it's going to be bad for people, it's going to be bad for the government. But this is where you also have to understand what the Federal Reserve Bank is saying themselves because around this time, after the September hike, I had a lot of people saying that the Federal Reserve Bank is going to change course, that there's no way that interest rates are going to continue to stay high, mortgage rates are way too high, we're already seeing the housing market slow down, we're already seeing the economy slow down. That in 2023, that the FED is going to reduce interest rates, and we're going to see interest rates, mortgage rates, all fall in 2023, well, in the beginning part of October, before their November meeting. The FED came out and said, whoa, 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 not so fast. We do not plan on cutting interest rates. In fact, we plan on raising interest rates and keeping them high through 2023. Now, will they keep true to what they're saying? I do not know. However, they came out and made the statement due to the fact you had people in the markets betting that the Federal Reserve Bank is going to start inflating the markets, that they were going to start cutting interest rates in 2023. And they're saying don't expect that to happen now. Look, I'm not in the business. I'm trying to predict what the Federal Reserve Bank is going to do because that's gambling and I'm not in the business of trying to fight the Federal Reserve Bank because that's going to be a very painful fight. They can print as much money as they want on command. Instead, I'm in the business of understanding what the Federal Reserve Bank is going to do that way I can allocate my money smartly instead of just throwing my money around blindly now the best best way for you to stay up to date on what's happening would be to actually read what the Federal Reserve Banks says read the reports read the raw data that way you can make smart analysis for yourself if you're not willing to or not interested in spending the time of actually reading the reports and listening to what they're saying not just the headlines but the actual reports and the next best aspect would be for you to join something like Market Briefs, which is my free financial newsletter that I created. It is a way for you to stay updated on what is happening in the inflation stock market, real estate market, cryptocurrency, dot, and global economy into a fun, easy to read and witty newsletter, I promise you. You are going to love reading Market Briefs in the morning, and if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, what are you waiting for? It's free, so if you want to join Market Briefs for free, I'll put a link to how you can join down in the description below. So Kathy Wood is the famous investor in the ARK funds, and she tweeted this in response to Elon Musk tweeting that a major Fed rate hike risks deflation. Kathy Wood said that deflation is in the pipeline heading for. The PPI, CPI, PCE, these are all just inflation indexes. And she's saying that from the peak of COVID, we have seen the price of a lot of things like lumber, copper, oil iron or fall, and then Elon Musk responded to Kathy Wood's thread of tweets by saying exactly, this is neither subtle nor secret, so you have the Federal Reserve Bank here saying expect more pain ahead, we're going to continue to raise interest rates, we don't care if it's going to crash the stock market, we don't care if it's going to crash the real estate market. We don't care if it'll going to crash the economy, that's what they may be saying right now, that they're going to continue to elevate interest rates to bring inflation down now, you have Kathy Wood and Elon Musk suppose you got to stop with the interest. Rate hikes because you're going to cause deflation, you're going to reason a recession, you are going to cause a lot of pain, and these things need to be stopped by the Federal Reserve Bank now, you got to recognize people's intentions. Because if you have money in the markets you want to cut in interest rates, because that's going to cause inflation, it's going to cause a boon, and it's going to cause your assets to go up. Of course, course, now if you have money on the sideline and you want to put money in the market, it's more beneficial for you to see interest rates go up. Because it really is going to hurt asset prices and create a better buying opportunity for you. This is just from the aspect of your Money now, if we speak about it from an economic perspective, of course, you need inflation to come down, of course, you want to see a reset, you want to see matters get actually taken care of instead of just putting a touch staple or a little band-aid on the problem. Because this bubble is going to continue to get bigger if we just keep inflating and inflating, inflating is very important to bring inflation down that way, you can save the health of our economy, but also save the health of our dollar.
but if we focus in on Kathy Wood and Elon Musk's perspective, they are in charge of either investing in or creating startups. And these startups are many times very heavy on debt, which means that they use outside money to grow many of these startups don't have a profit. Because if you make an income, it truly is looked at as bad in the eyes of investors. Because if you have a profit, meaning you have cash in the bank, this is not being invested, that's not being used, so you're not growing as quick as possible, as fast as possible so. For these startups, it is very advantageous to go into as much debt as feasible to raise as much investment dollars as possible, that way can develop massive and fast, you don't want to have a earnings because that's dead money sitting in your bank account, you want to investments. Every dollar that you have back into yourself now, if you remember what I said in the beginning part of this video, who does deflation hurt and benefit well deflation hurts people who have debt. Because now when you have debt you have all this money that you owe, but now the value of your dollars are getting more expensive, which means you owe this money with more expensive dollars meaning your debt becomes more expensive. When you have deflation you can think of it, just like when inflation happens in case you borrow half a million dollars to buy a home and then the home price goes up to a million dollars because you have got inflation and your salary goes up significantly your earnings doubles while your mortgage payment is not going to sense as painful because you've had greater inflation and your debt is fixed however if you have deflation you have this half a million dollar mortgage but now your home price goes down to 250000 now, it's much more painful, much more expensive to pay back your mortgage especially. If your salary gets cut in half as well, that's what these business owners fear is this type of deflation, because now you're going to have to pay more money, more dollars, more valuable dollars to pay. Down your debt plus, I should also mention that Kathy Wood and Elon Musk have a little bit of a different opinion of what causes deflation, because Kathy Wood has said pretty publicly that in. Her eyes deflation can happen naturally through innovation, because if you invest in innovation, even if that causes inflation, that will eventually cause deflation, because innovation and technology will purpose the price of things to go down generation, will improve deliver chain issues, it will improve the way that we produce things, it will improve the way that we create our merchandise, and this will allow us to produce more stuff at a cheaper price, which will ultimately allow the price of things to go down when you have this sort of innovation, when you have this type of competition, it causes the price of factors to go down, so Kathy Wood says we don't need to worry about this high. Inflation that we have right now, we want to continue investing in innovation. Technology. Because this will naturally lead to deflation in our economy now, she does have a point that when you have economic growth, when you have new technology, when you have new processes, this can cause the price of things to go. Down, that's how you have a strong economy, you produce more products, you get better at producing, you have a more efficient process, which causes the price of things to go down, but we have also printed an insane amount of money, not just in the last couple of years, but in the last decade and a half. This money then does motive problems, it does cause pain, I mean the most expensive kind of money is free money, and so that you have to understand the balance here. It is the balancing act. Yes, technology can cause deflation, but printing cash hurts the value of the dollar. And this is where the Federal Reserve Bank is now going to be working to fight inflation without hopefully triggering a deep recession now. Are they going to be able to try this? I don't know right now. You can see all signs are leading to a deep recession because the Federal Reserve Bank is continuing to raise interest rates. We have created a massive bubble in the last couple of years, and the size of the crash is typically in relation to the size of the bubble. And the size of the bubble has gotten very big in the last couple of years, especially. And so this is where you don't want to again predict what the FED is doing. You don't want to try to guess that, but instead be prepared for opportunities. So when you see the price of things go down, you know which assets. You want to buy, you want to have the ability to purchase assets because market crashes and recessions create more millionaires than any other time. However, it requires you to be financially educated and organized, meaning you want to know what you want to buy and you need to have get entry to the capital, the cash, the money to be able to buy those assets on sale. And then you got to be able to hold on to them for the long term because it is going to be a bumpy time period to get out of this economic scenario that we're in right now because no longer most effective are we facing an economic slowdown. But we're also facing high inflation for the last number of 
crashes that we've had. We had an economic slowdown without inflation, which meant the Federal Reserve Bank could create inflation. The Federal Reserve Bank could cut interest rates. They could do quantitative easing. They could stimulate the economy to get the economy moving again. However, it's not so. Easy this time, we're seeing an economic slowdown with high inflation, so if the FEDs were to start stimulating again, yeah. Maybe they can get the economy booming, but inflation would get significantly worse, which would ultimately hurt. The economy even more so, this is in which you want to pay attention to what's going on will keep you published on. In my Patreon love you thank you so much for watching this video.